Cappuccino. Oh, oh, we're live. Hello, welcome to Import Legacy. Have you seen those two be continued memes? Yeah, those. Did you think they just came out of blue on the internet by some genius? Well, no, they came from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So yes, everything is a JoJo reference. Even breathing? Yes, where did you come from? Must be the work of an enemy stand. A what? Zawaro Tokyo Tomorrow! Time has resumed. It's a 30 year enigma created in 1980 by Hirohiko Araki that's still ongoing. Unlike manga series like One Piece and Fairy Tale, two excruciatingly long and drawn out series, JoJo's volumes are broken into parts, with each part telling a different story that all coincides with the overall universe of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. The parts of JoJo in order are the following Phantom Blood, Battle Tendency, Stardust Crusaders, Diamonds Unbreakable or Diamonds Not Crash, Bento Oreo, Stone Ocean, Still Ball Run, and JoJo Leon. There's an animated series going in addition to that. So far it has covered the first four parts and I'm hoping we get to see Prince and the Gang and Vento Oreo in the next season. Yes, I said Prince. There are also nine, yes, nine JoJo video games. Two by the title of its namesake, Heritage of the Future, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, note the spelling, Phantom Blood, All Star Battle, Stardust Shooters, Eyes of Heaven, and just recently released, Diamond Records. Phew. You're probably wondering why it's called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, yes? You never discussed the plot. What are you doing here? Well, I just wanted to tell you that- No. Phew. You're probably wondering why it's- Wait a second. Okay, he's not coming. Okay, so you're probably wondering why it's called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, right? So, hold on to your hats, because this manga is very true to its name. In the 1880s in Great Britain, a wealthy young boy named Jonathan Joestar, let's designate him as Jojo One, meets this boy named Dio, who has to live with him because Jonathan's father saved his dad's life before his dad ultimately died. Dio, sadly, has an ulterior motive of wanting the inheritance of Jonathan Joestar, so he grows up and becomes a vampire to do just that. In order to stop Dio, Jonathan learns the art of Hamon, or the Ripple, an ancient Tibetan ability that harnesses sunlight and air via breathing from some guy in a top hat. Next, we go to New York City in the year 1938 to Jojo One's great-grandson, Joseph Joestar, Jojo Two, who inherited the ability of the Haman and ends up having to deal with ripples, ha, ha. of his great-grandfather's past and used his powers to fight four Aztec vampire gods of fitness alongside his teacher, bubble buddy, and a Nazi. Then we go to 1983 Japan, where Jojo 2 goes to meet his troubled grandson Jotaro Kujo, Jojo 3, with his friend Abdal in jail, because not only is he delinquent, he also believes that he has an evil spirit following him. He learns it's actually a manifestation of his soul called a Stan, which gives him powers, and was activated because Dio, same Dio who knew Jojo 1 but now in caps lock, has come out of his hidey hole. Jojo 2 decides to take his grandson on a trip to defeat Dio, who currently is in Egypt, but not only has Dio been messing with the Joe stars, he's also ruined the lives of a few people in his past time, and they team up. This foe seen Teal 6, made up of a fortune teller, a delinquent, an old man, a Frenchman with a flat top that'll make Kid and Play proud, a cherry enthusiast, and the local dog with a caffeine addiction, team up to fight him. Now, back to Japan, this time in 1999. This Jojo, Jojo 4, is Josuke Higashigata, Jojo 3 goes to his 16 year old uncle, Josuke, to tell him just who his dad really is and that his town of Moiro is being filled with stand users because of a stand giving bow and arrow brought then left there by guess who. They go looking for the person who possesses the stand giving bow and arrow and fight the stand users along the way. While doing this, they find out that an even bigger menace is in their town, a serial killer. He's a stand user, but a Japanese version of David Bowie with a hand fesh and a cat with a junk rat complex. Josuke teams up with his estranged father, his nephew that's 12 years older than him, 
dollar dollar bills, y'all. A 14-inch Foley artist, a Rocky's alter ego, long hair don't care, and a ghost. What am I reading? What is this manga? I really read all of this? I'm not even done describing the parts. A Rocky, what's good with you? It's now 2001 Naples, Italy. Jojo 3 sends Koichi, the 4-inch Foley artist, there to investigate Giorno Giovanna, Dio's son. Surprisingly, he isn't hostile, but instead he's trying to become a gang star. What's a gang star? I have not the slightest idea. Ask him. Giorno uses his stand to turn the Italian mafias. Good? Trust me, okay, this is Dio's son. He joins a mafia called Pascione. It's an all stand user mafia made up of boys named after, <clears throat> excuse me, their names are various Italian foods. They go to Capari to reap the wealth of the ex-leader of Pescione that involves fighting other mafias along the way, which ends up with them having to escort their ex-leader's daughter through Italy to protect her from the other opposing mafiosos. Going back to the linear story of Jojo, we head to a Florida prison in 2011 to meet Jolene Cujo, Jojo 5. Jolene obviously takes after her dad, Jojo 3, seeing that we meet her in a prison. The only difference is that she's there for a crime she did not commit. Her father comes back from his marine biology expedition to tell Jolene that the real reason she was framed was because she's being set up to be killed by a follower of Dio. Turns out, the follower is a priest whose hairline is connected to his eyebrows and is looking for Dio's bone. In prison, Jolene befriends a walking sticker collection, a colony of plankton, the weather, a Chicago cub, and Danny Phantom to stop Father Hairline from finding Dio's bone and attaining heaven. Now, if you thought that was wild, throw all of that out the window because it's alternative timeline time. 1890 USA, Jojo 1 Remastered, Johnny Joestar, is a jockey, participating in a race across the United States called Steel Ball Run. During the race, he partners up with a ball spinner appropriately named Gyro when they realize that there's an ulterior goal to the race. Apparently, the real reason for the race is for people to help the president find Jesus. Johnny and Riff Raff befriend at Jenna Fluid Nun in Jurassic Park's newest edition, Diosaurus, to stop the president's filthy acts at a reasonable price. We take a big leap forward to 2012 in Japan, where we see Josuke Higashikata, Gappy, who is Jojo 4 remastered, kinda-ish. We start with a girl named Yasuho Hirose, who while one day was walking past this thing called the Wall Eye, finds Josuke naked, buried in rubble, and discovers he has double of several body parts one of which she immediately notices to be his testicles. I'm serious. Look at this unedited manga cop. I can't make this up even if I tried. Anyway, he has no memory of who he is and how he got there, and thus the quest to find his identity begins. Jeez, saying that out loud makes it sound like bizarre is an understatement. I didn't even scratch the surface of JoJo. Believe me when I say that I avoided all major spoilers. Trust me, it all makes sense. You just have to experience it to understand it in its full beauty, because Joseph Bizarre Adventure is truly a masterpiece. That'll be all for today on Import Legacy. Whoa, 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 whoa. You still